All right, everyone, in this video, I want to share some good news that I learned recently about combining MSE with SFOT treatment. And that news is this, that following MSE, after you split the suture, you do not have to wait for the suture to fully heal again before doing SFOT. Now, why is this a big deal? Because this basically reduces the treatment time of combining MSE with SFOT by six months to a year. Let me explain. MSE splits the suture. It's fantastic for widening the maxilla. You can get a tremendous amount of bone-borne, bona fide skeletal expansion of the maxilla with MSE. It's the best maxillary lateral expander that exists. Not only because it completely blasts open the arch and um, provides a tremendous amount of tongue space by expanding the maxilla laterally, but it also expands the nasal floor because the roof of the mouth is the floor of the nose. And so you kill two birds with one stone with MSE. You expand the maxilla laterally and you expand your nasal volume significantly as well, uh, which, uh, which facilitates nasal breathing uh, in, on two fronts, by providing intraoral volume gains and also by providing nasal volume gains. However, MSE has one, well, it has two glaring disadvantages. The first is that it doesn't expand forward. That's where appliances like, for example, the face mask come in or AGA or, as we'll get to in a second, SFOT. The other shortfall of MSE is that it does nothing for the mandible. And this is a big one because if you want to be really aggressive with your MSE expansion, if you want to, if you're doing MSE not just to correct a crossbite, which is to say if the, ma if the maxilla is narrower than your mandible, if your upper teeth are closer together than your lower teeth are, then of course you can do MSE to widen the maxilla to the point that the upper teeth are now as wide as the lower teeth. But that's not why I did MSE in full. I mean, I did have a crossbite. Um, my, ma my maxilla was in fact narrower than my mandible when I started. However, I went way past that with my MSE expansion. I expanded the MSE to the point that now my maxilla is significantly wider than my mandible to the point where I am now in what's called a Brody bite on one side, which is to say that the upper teeth and the lower teeth, they barely even touch because that's how much wider my maxilla is than my mandible. And this is what happens if you want to really get the most bang for your buck out of MSE. If you want to, if you're expanding with MSE f just to get the maximum amount of intraoral volume so that your mewing practice can be, um, completely enhanced by all this added tongue space, or if you want to blow open your nasal volume significantly, then um, you're going to end up in a situation like me where the maxilla is significantly wider than the mandible. So where does that leave you with the mandible? What, you can't live in a Brody bite for the rest of your life. You've got to do something so that your upper and lower teeth start to um, make contact again. In a prior video, I discussed options for this. I said MSDO was an option, mandibular symphysial distraction osteogenesis. That requires the inter intervention of a surgeon because a surgeon's got to basically go in, cut your mandible in half, and then install an MSE-like appliance on your mandible, which you then turn and it, it expands the mandible with, um, you know, after having cut the damn thing in half. But there's, there's one other option which is SFOT. And SFOT does not require the intervention of an oral surgeon, it does not require cutting the mandible in half. Um, what SFOT involves is uh, surgically adding bone to the arches, to the upper and lower arches, and then with that new bone being there, you can then expand the teeth through that new bone. So basically the gums are flayed open. Um, I know it's definitely not, it's not minimally invasive by any means, uh, but the gums are flayed open and then some type of artificial bone is added 
into the arches um, once the gums are open. And then uh, also some, something is done so that uh, the teeth can then be expanded very easily. They can be moved very easily. So I think um, incisions are made besides the teeth. Don't quote me on this. Um, definitely fact check me on this, but something is done so that the teeth can then be moved very easily with orthodontic pressure. And this is basically what SFOT does. And SFOT allows you, by the way, it stands for Surgically Facilitated Orthodontic Therapy. It allows you to then move the upper and lower teeth quickly and significantly in both the forward and lateral direction. So SFOT is a, um, an option for correcting the mandible after a significant MSE expansion. And this is what I'll be doing uh, very soon um, because, again, my mandible is narrower than my maxilla. I need to do something to be able to expand my mandible significantly, and that's going to be the SFOT, but also from my AGA and my Schwartz treatments, which preceded my MSE treatments, uh, my, my upper gums became very thin, um, especially from all the pushing of the teeth through the alveolar bone with those appliances, um, especially AGA. And so my orthodontist is not even really comfortable moving my teeth at all just to straighten them out unless I do some kind of alveolar bone augmentation, which is what the SFOT is as well. Um, again, you fly open the gums and you add new bone. So SFOT kills two birds with one stone for me. It allows me to repair my thinned gums and it allows me to bolster my alveolar bone to the point where I can expand my mandible uh, laterally to meet my maxilla after MSE expansion. But actually M uh, SFOT provides a third advantage for me, which is that SFOT by adding all this new bone allows you to also expand in the forward direction in the forward direction. And that's significant because remember the other glaring downfall of MSE was its failure to expand in the forward direction. So SFOT is very promising. I think there's a lot of, there's a lot of open questions um, about how much expansion is really possible following the SFOT. And I'll be reporting on that as soon as I do it. I imagine that Dr. Nuaz and I will try to expand um, as much as possible in the forward direction and lateral direction on the lower um, so that we don't have to tilt my upper teeth in at all to correct my occlusion. But I want to circle back to the main point of this video and that is that I learned from Dr. Um, Dr. Curry, the periodontist who's going to be doing my SFOT, that um, it's not necessary for me to wait six months or a year for the MSE split to heal before I do SFOT because what what I was under the impression of was that so my maxilla is in two pieces right now and um, the question is can he fly open my gums and add bone while there's this big gap between the left and right side of my maxilla you might think not you might think oh well maybe he'll fly open the gums and there'll be a big gap there and then when he tries to add the new bone that space will interfere with his operation or that new bone won't seat well because of the gap. Well, it turns out that's not an issue at all in that you can do SFOT as, pretty much as soon as you finish expanding with MSE, um, which, is, which was confirmed by Dr. Curry the other day. And this is good because it means that after you do MSE, if you want to do SFOT, you don't have to wait six months or a year for, for, the S, for the MSC split to heal. You can jump into SFOT and get all of the benefits that we just talked about right away, um, which is good because it reduces treatment time by you know, up to a year, depending on how long you would have waited for the MSC split to heal. So this is great news for anyone interested in combining the MSC and SFOT treatments, as I will be doing Treatment time is something we all need to consider when, when considering um, adult orthodontics and the MSE SFOT treatment time, considering that this weight is not necessary, is cut down to like within a year you can be done with everything. That includes expansion with the MSE and then the SFOT treatment plus the expansion following 
the SFOT, including all alignment of teeth afterward with Invisalign, which follows SFOT treatment, all of that can be done within a year, given this new fact that I've learned. Compare that to something like AGA, which requires you know, eight to 12 months of expansion with AGA and then another year and a half to two years of braces after the AGA with the controlled arch and the braces, um, which is just ridiculous. So yeah, MSE plus SFOT treatment time is less than half of, I would think, your, your standard um, expansion and then braces protocol. So that's it for now. I hope you enjoyed that video. Talk to you all soon. Peace out.